Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Now, first things first, today I'm gonna to be even more monotone than I usually am. Uh, and that's because we're doing it boosted boy style, we're working through the night. Uh, it's already half past 10, so I'm gonna keep the noise down a bit. Don't wanna upset the neighbors too much. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be working on the Celica GT4's engine. Now, the last video we've done the piston rings, but the video before that, you would have seen the really bad news that uh, the crankshaft had actually um, was irreparable. We couldn't we couldn't reuse it. Well, um, I basically put out a call for help to a few people, and uh, TCB Performance actually stepped in, and uh, they've saved the day with a replacement crankshaft. They sorted me out on a crank, had it in stock, overnight dispatch, and also everything else I've ordered. No waiting around. Next day I had it. Uh, the previous owner who actually owned this car, he used to go to TCB. For all his parts he actually recommended them to me and uh, I'm happy he did because they've actually proved to be uh, the ones that have saved the day in this case so I'll turn the camera around we'll have a look at the order that I've actually received from them all the parts I've bought to rebuild this engine uh, pretty much everything we actually need to get this engine back in the car and working so here we have the crankshaft I received from TCB it's uh, a crankshaft that's identical to the crankshaft that come out of the engine um, and it doesn't need any machine work. Uh, I've I've inspected it in detail, and uh, it's in really good condition. So uh, yeah, dodged the bullet there, and I'm I'm really thankful to TCB for not only having the part, but being competitive and getting it to me so soon. Uh, now while I was there actually ordering from TCB, I decided to uh, make another order. Uh, now it was actually Paul I spoke to at TCB, and you can contact him basically through um, phone calls all over Facebook. And uh, he hasn't just helped me out with buying stuff, he's actually given me some technical advice as well. Um, so yeah, I've pretty much gone for all genuine parts, uh, or genuine where needed, let's say. Um, now this is a brand new, genuine Toyota oil pump for the engine. Actually, let's open it up and show you. So brand new, not cutting corners. Here we have a genuine Toyota head gasket. These are not genuine Toyota, but they are Payen. Now, Payen are the highest quality um, pattern make that I've ever seen. So that's the only two things that are not genuine. That's the water pump and the head box. Here we have ACL race thrust bearings. Now, if you don't know, ACL are actually one of the best companies that actually make bearings for the inside of an engine. Um, I've got here, obviously, ACL race um, crank and comrod bearings. I do have here an Xedi clutch kit. Uh, now I believe Xedi actually make clutches for cars, for manufacturers. I know my Evo 10 has a dual clutch gearbox and that actually has an Xedi clutch in it from factory. So Xedi are OEM equivalent um, and they, it is a full clutch kit but in this case Paul advised at TCB I actually go with a genuine Toyota thrust bearing. Oop. I absolutely begrudged paying for this. And that is a genuine Toyota harmonic balancer. So the previous owner actually recommended I go to TCP Performance. I'm not disappointed with my order, really happy with it. And uh, yeah, really, you know, they helped me out a lot with that crank. Um, you know, there's not many places you can get a crankshaft overnight for a 25 year old car, but well, you can, but you know, for probably 10 times the price I paid for that. Now then, today I want to assemble the engine, uh, or at least um, check the bottom end tolerances. Now, off camera, I've actually replaced all four comrades for a good used set. Um, just standard parts, to Toyota parts is what I really want in this engine. Um, so I've done that off camera. Some days, you know, it's, 
it's hard enough to work on the car, let alone try and film everything while doing it. So on that particular occasion, I did do it off camera. And also I cleaned up the pistons, uh, which I've done it as the Toyota manual recommends. Um, so yeah, that's gone pretty nice. Now uh, I'm just gonna install the pistons. So let's do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually put a small coat in of engine oil on the cylinder walls. We don't want the pistons on the bores to be completely dry when it first starts up. Okay, so I'm going to install the actual piston and rod assembly now into the block. Um, now, obviously, if I'm going to install it, we're going to have to find a way of squeezing those piston rings down so that it actually fits inside the cylinder. And that's where this tool comes in, which is actually called the piston ring compressor. And what that does is it actually will squeeze around this piston and uh, compress those rings. And then you place the piston ring uh, compressor on top of the block and then you tap the piston through the compressor and straight into the block. Now it's important to actually get these piston rings on um, in the right order, both you know on the ridge, uh, which way they flipped over, with these actual ridges on them, so that when they come back and forth, they actually scrape on the wall the way they're designed to. But not only that, here we have the end gaps in the rings. They have to be at specific degrees on the actual piston. Okay, so the pistons are now in the actual block. Uh, I've turned the block over and now I want to install the crankshaft and check the bottom end bearing clearances. So uh, I'll be making a standalone how-to video on how to actually use plastic gauge, um, but just for the purposes of this video, we'll have sort of a reduced version. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Now then, it's time to actually install the bearings now. And uh, we're not going to just install it all, build it up, and then just sort of call it a day. Uh, we're actually going to check all the tolerances first with plastic gauge. Now, what plastic gauge actually is, if you imagine like a piece of dried spaghetti, imagine that's made out of plastic and it's precisely um, sized. And uh, what you can actually do is put like a little line of this plastic wax spaghetti type stuff on here well not there on top of the bearings that are going to go on there and when they squelch against the crank once it's torqued up how much that squelches you can actually have like a little measuring tape um, which comes with the plastic gauge and you can actually get an idea for what the clearance is now i trust paul who sent me this um he said it hadn't been reground um and it's obviously a good crank which it is um but if for whatever reason um, he'd accidentally sent me the wrong crank. This crank had been ground in the past. Um, now would be the time that we would notice this. And it's this check that would perhaps save another engine rebuild. Or perhaps Paul did get it all right. And perhaps ACL have uh, had a mix up in the factory. One of the bearings is the wrong size. And they've actually given me an oversized bearing. And all the rest are um, the correct size. 
Well, rather than just fitting them, putting it all back in the car and the engine knocking again, uh, it'd be now that we would actually see. Now we'd see that the bearing is out of spec. Uh, the squelch would be too high and it would be a red flag. And we would have to either machine the crank or inspect the bearings and try and trace uh, and try and trace why that is actually happening. Um, so yeah, it's a standard procedure. Technically, you don't have to do it. In theory, the bearings, the crank, they should already be uh, machined to the exact size they need to be. And some of these single-use parts, like head gaskets and things like that, you don't really want to be having to pull all them back out after finding out you've spun a bearing because you didn't check the plastic gauge. This is the actual plastic gauge and obviously here's the, uh, the measuring stick thing that it comes with. So we're just going to uh, take a piece of plastic gauge out of here and break it off and just lay it on top of the journals. So as you can see that's balancing there now, just there very faintly. Um, so I'll put the cap on just to stop it going anyway. I've actually filled up this cap here with engine oil and Toyota require you to um, actually dip the bolt in oil before it goes in, uh, dip the thread in and then obviously lubricate where the head's going to go and this is going to give us a more accurate torque reading. So I'll dip my finger in, just rub a little bit of oil here and a little bit of oil here. So Head doesn't give us a, doesn't bind and give us an inaccurate torque reading and then I'll do the same again on the threads of the bolts now these are absolutely dry as a bone because I've obviously gone through everything cleaning it but uh, the thread needs to be dipped in oil you don't want a massive amount of oil left on me though because what it can actually do is it can pull at the bottom of the thread and again that will work against us so that's hand tight and I'll repeat all these now if we look closely here this is a really good view it's hand tight but you can see the plastic gauge there and as I talk down now that's going to squelch Workshop manual says we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, just a little tip don't ask how I learned, you don't want to know the answer. Before you use a torque wrench, just test it out on a wheel nut, just set it up to 30 odd newton meters or whatever foot pounds, and just make sure it actually works. Because I've had one, I don't know if I dropped it or what, but uh, it wouldn't click, and I didn't realize and I may or may not have snapped. But very difficult to replace bolt once upon a time. time we could just leave it but we don't know if the clearances are correct so I'm going to remove them and we're going to have a look at the plastic gauge results Not 
really the results I was expecting, to be honest. Something's definitely wrong. Well, no, the bearings are either too tight or I've been given the wrong plastic gauge. I mean, it's off the chart, literally. More drama when it comes to the crankshaft on this Celica. Um, it's out of spec, something's wrong. Uh, I don't know what's wrong, I'm gonna have to investigate it, but uh, I'm too tired to deal with it now. It's middle of the morning and uh, uh, a bit disheartening, but never mind. Uh, I only stayed at this late because I thought I could get it all done. I thought everything was gonna go perfectly smooth and it would be a fully assembled short block ready for me to put the head on in the morning. But uh, yeah, getting a bit carried away. I'm sure you guys will be interested now to find out what's actually wrong with it. Um, but uh, I'm gonna go in now. I can't investigate any further. I'm absolutely shattered and it's pretty cold in this garage at uh, half one in the morning. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. This is not going as smoothly as I had planned, but uh, I'm sure, you know, we can get to the bottom of it. Cheers, guys.